Hello, my lovely students. Let's get going on example 13. So looking at my picture, again, we have to show how our two triangles are congruent, which we already know they're gonna be congruent by AA. I know the surprise is ruined, but the fun part is we have to show how they're congruent by AA, which if you look in our picture, we don't have any congruent angles. So we need to do some work to find our congruent angles. So the first thing that hops out at me in my picture is the fact that I have these little arrows. What do those arrows mean in your picture? They do mean parallel lines. So we need to be thinking back to all those nifty parallel line angles that we talked about. So you need to be looking for some letters forming in our picture. So maybe an F, a C, a Z or those two V kind of looking things. So let's see, do you guys see any letters in your picture? I see them too, you guys. You see the Z? Whoa, I see one Z right there. I also see another Z or kind of S looking thing right there. Okay, so technically I know that like angle A and angle N are congruent. I also know that angle I and angle T are congruent. Okay, so technically with that, I already have enough information to show that the two triangles are congruent by A. But there's something else that you could have marked in your picture. So I'm going to kind of group those together. So I'm going to say angle A is congruent to angle N or angle N is congruent to angle A. Oh, that's what I just did. Oh my goodness. The demon cats are getting me. Okay, so angle I is congruent to angle T. And both of those, um, the reason why is because they're alternate interior angles. If you remember, the Z shape are the alternate interior angles. So by the alternate interior angle theorem, those two angles are congruent. So technically, I already have enough information to say the two triangles are similar by AA similarity. But you know, we love trying to find all the possibilities for our angle. So if you didn't spot the Z right away, you could have also seen another nifty letter pop up. Do you guys see the X? Do you see the X right here? Which that was a horrible color choice, Miss Long. Get your life together. I promise you guys one day, one day Miss Long will be doing great. Okay, do you see this X right here? Do you see it? <gasps> Which angles form at the X? Holy hot dog, you guys, that's correct. Vertical angles form at the X. So I could have also said ARI, angle ARI, is congruent to angle TRN. And that is because of the vertical angle theorem. Okay, so again, you didn't have to list all this out, but any combinations of these, um, any combinations of two of these three angles would have been enough to show these were similar by AA. So you could have used like one alternate interior angle in the vertical angles. You could have used two of the alternate interior angles, or you could have used the other alternate interior angle in the vertical angle. So any combination of those would have worked. All right, so we have like super proved that these two triangles are similar by AA. So now that we know that these two triangles are similar, Guess what, you guys? That means the sides are proportionate, which before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and mark these in because that will kind of help me to know which sides correspond to each other. Okay, so I'm trying to find angle X and Y. So angle X is in between the three arcs and the one arc. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and set it up with the X first. So X is in between my three arc and my one arc. So which side over here is in between the three arc and the one arc. That is correct. That would be my 10.5. Okay, and the Y, well, the Y is in between my one arc and my two arcs. Now, to keep consistent, my X started from my bottom triangle. So I need to start from my bottom triangle this time. So the Y was in the top triangle, which means it's going to go in my denominator. Okay, and my bottom triangle, the side that's in between the one and the two arcs, is the eight. So that would go in the top because I went from the bottom to the top, bottom to the top triangle. Okay, now I need to find that side that I, or I need to find the side ratio 
that I already have both values for. So if you look here, four and seven are my two remaining sides. They're both in between my two arc and my three arc. So since I already have those two values, that is gonna be the side that I use both times when I'm solving for X and Y. So my bottom side is the four and then my top triangle side is the seven. So I'm gonna use the four over seven twice because that was the side that was already given to me and I'm not trying to find anything for it. And four over seven will not reduce down any further. So guess what? We can start solving. And how do we solve a proportion? We do in fact cross multiply. So let's get going, cross multiply. So seven times X will give me a seven X and that will equal four times 10 and a half, which four times 10 is 40 and then half of four is two. So 40 plus two is 42. So there you go. Okay, if you couldn't do that in your head, you could have worked it off to the side as well. Okay, all right. And then we just gotta solve for X. So seven, is secretly multiplying to the X. So that tells me I need to divide by seven on both sides, which seven divided by seven will cancel and turn to one, which means X will equal 42 divided by seven, which is six. There you go, six is donezo. Okay, and same thing for Y, we just gotta cross multiply. So four times Y will give me four Y and that will equal seven times eight, which will give me 56. And don't forget this four and Y are secretly multiplying. So that tells me I'm going to divide both sides by four, which four divided by four cancels and turns to one, which tells me that Y will equal 56 over four, that will be, I'm gonna work it out, so I'm doubting myself. Four goes into five once, 14, there we go, 14. So why would be 14? Wasn't that fun? I can tell you already that example 14 is gonna be even more fun, so get excited, 14 is gonna be a blast.